Good evening, folks. This is The Weird Part, and I am your host, Vincent Freewell. Tonight, we will be discussing Juan Posadas, a Latin American communist leader who had some very interesting beliefs and theories about UFOs, aliens, and dolphins, and the positive aspects of nuclear war. So it should be fairly interesting. I doubt almost anybody tuned in to hear me give a full-on political science lecture about communism in the 20th century, but to get to Posadas, we do have to provide some background, and we do have to talk communism. So allow me to provide a very brief and grossly oversimplified history of communism. Communism also referred to as Marxist-Leninism, begins with the ideas of Karl Marx, who along with uh, Frederick Engels was a communist, a political philosopher and writer in the 1800s. And he proposed that human society would naturally evolve from feudalism to capitalism to socialism to communism, and that communism would be kind of a utopia. And he believed that this was a scientific theory of, much as there's biological evolution, that societies would also go through this somewhat automatic process of moving from lower to higher. And in a really small nutshell, that's Marxism. Eventually, the working people would take over from the capitalists, and then society would later evolve to a pure communist utopia. Around the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, so shortly after 1900, um, Lenin, Valdemir Lenin, becomes a leading figure in communism. And his Leninism, his philosophy differs from Marx, is a modification of Marx, and says that Communism is not just going to happen. It's not just going to automatically evolve. It's going to take professional revolutionaries to go and take action and make it happen. And that's what happens in the Russian Revolution. Again, oversimplifying here to get to... This is the weird part. We want to get to the aliens. But there is a revolution in Russia in 1917. After a series of events, the communists end up in power, and Lenin is their leader. There are two main subordinates to Lenin, Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky. And... After the death of Lenin, there becomes a huge split between Stalin and Trotsky. And Stalin succeeds in becoming the leader of the Soviet Union. And Trotsky, who had a different philosophy of communism, who believed in what he called the permanent revolution, and was seemingly at least a more democratic, more free version of communism, was exiled. Stalin took over, made the Soviet Union a brutal dictatorship. Trotsky at first was imprisoned within the country and then later exiled from the Soviet Union. He ended up in Mexico And in 1940, agents of Stalin murdered him by beating him to death with a hammer. So that 
was the end of Leon Trotsky. But Trotskyism had become a current within communism and for several decades was a very big deal. And there were diverse groups under the banner of communism in Latin America and all over the world. And they usually tended to fall either in the Stalinist camp or in the Trotskyite camp. So that kind of brings that up to speed. The Communist Party in the Soviet Union and throughout the world was called Com Intern, Communism International, was also referred to as the Third International. There had been two previous international movements of working people. That's a history we're not really going to deal with this evening. But the Soviet communist apparatus was referred to as the Third International. After the Stalin-Trotsky break, Trotsky formed what he called the Fourth International. And it was into this fourth international that the main subject of our show tonight came, entered into and became a political activist. The man who had come to be referred to as Juan Posadas, and I'd just like to right now preemptively apologize. I'm probably going to mangle just about every name because I'm just not good at pronouncing names. But Juan Posadas was born Romero Romulio Postali Franzinelli in Argentina in 1912. He was the child of immigrants from Italy and grew up in conditions of absolutely brutal poverty. It was these early experiences that most likely drew him to communism and seeing Trotskyite communism as a way that no one should ever have to go through what he went through, which was just the bottom of poverty and in a very repressive society in Argentina. He used the name Juan Posadas, usually just referred to as J. Posadas, because in that era, almost everybody involved in revolutionary politics was using a pseudonym to avoid, you know, being, being arrested, being killed for their activities. Leon Trotsky was not born Leon Trotsky. Joseph Stalin was not born Joseph Stalin. Almost everybody had a revolutionary name. So Homero Frasnelli became Juan Posadas and became a shoemaker in the 1930s and became very active in the cause of Trotskyite communism and was quite influential, did uh, union organizing, did a lot of political activity. Posadas and his movement would go on to be quite influential throughout Latin America, especially in Cuba, until eventually provoking the ire of Fidel Castro and being banned. But that is perhaps a story for another day. After the death of Stalin in 1953, the Soviets and the heirs to Stalin became the somewhat more moderate wing of world communism. That, that's a statement that 
requires some explanation. But in general, they, and Stalin was ultimately succeeded by Nikita Khrushchev and others who went on to seek to not have an all-out war, particularly a nuclear war, with the United States and with the, the Western powers. This sounds like what it sounds like, but it's the truth. Uh, the, there were two sides to this uh, issue, and the post-Stalinist Soviet communists had the opinion that nuclear war was a bad thing. Uh, a lot of the Trotskyites, particularly the, what became the Posadists, believed that nuclear war was a good thing and that it would quickly and almost instantly wipe out the global capitalist powers and that a socialist society would rise from the ashes. That sounds so radical and out there that it almost sounds like a parody, but this was completely serious. And it was not something that Posada or those in his movement backed away from embracing. They were very clear that they supported nuclear war. And they had a strong belief that the working class would rise from the ashes and quickly establish a socialist society. In 1962, the Posadaists broke away from the other Trotskyites in the Fourth International and formed their own group, which they referred to as the Fourth International. And at their founding conference, the movement proclaimed that atomic war is inevitable. It will destroy half of humanity. It is going to destroy immense human riches. It is very possible. The atomic war is going to provoke a true inferno on Earth, but it will not impede communism. We, will pre we are preparing ourselves for a stage in which, before the atomic war, we shall struggle for power. During the atomic war, we shall struggle for power, and we shall be in power. There is no beginning. There is an end to atomic war. Because atomic war is simultaneous revolution in the whole world. Not as a chain reaction. Simultaneous. Simultaneous doesn't mean the same day and the same hour. Classic historic events should not be measured by hours or days, but by periods. The working class will maintain itself and will immediately have to seek its cohesion and centralization. After destruction commences... The masses are going to emerge in all countries, in a short time, in a few hours. Capitalism cannot defend itself in an atomic war, except by putting itself in caves and attempting to destroy all they can. The masses, in contrast, are going to come out, will have to come out, because it's the only way to survive, defeating the enemy, the apparatus of capitalism. Police, army, will not be able to resist. It will be necessary to organize the workers' power immediately. Posadas wrote that nuclear war equals revolutionary war. It will damage humanity, but it will not, it cannot, destroy the level of consciousness reached by it. Humanity will pass quickly through a nuclear war into a new human society, socialism. So yes, they were completely serious that there would be a nuclear war, and they would emerge from it, the victors, and the human race would take a great leap forward once it was done destroying itself. I would say, at the most, at the very minimum, it's a really good thing that the Trotskyite faction never actually gained control of any country, especially any country with nuclear weapons. Yes, the Soviets had a great number of problems, a lot of things wrong with them, but at least they could agree that nuclear war was a bad thing and should be generally avoided. What 
the Posadas would have done had they actually gotten power in a country that had nuclear weapons could only be disaster. But this was a completely serious belief. I'm kind of surprised that in today's world of denialism, when many plain truths have competing factions that deny that climate change exists, that deny various things that we all hear about, I'm surprised there's nobody echoing the Posadists and saying that, well, you know, nuclear war would actually be a good thing. I think we should do that. But to the best of my knowledge, those ideas went out with Posada and his faction of Trotskyites. In 1968, Posada published an essay, and, well, I'll let the title speak for itself. It's available online, and if you have the patience, it's uh, well worth reading through. It is fairly long and has that ultra wordy on and on and on style of writing that is, in my experience, um, part and parcel of the far left. Having said that, it has a lot of really interesting concepts in it. And it is called Flying Saucers, The Process of Matter and Energy, Science, the Revolutionary and Working Class Struggle, and social, the Socialist Future of Mankind. So yes, it, it's like that all the way through. Um, but it is very interesting. And Posadas explains his philosophy of UFOs and aliens. And he has no doubt that UFOs are alien vehicles. And it goes back to Marx's theory of the natural evolution of societies. Posada simply takes that to its furthest extreme and says that since all societies go through feudalism, capitalism, socialism, and communism, any far advanced civilization must already be communists. So, in short, aliens are coming here, and the aliens are communist. They're here to help us, and they're here to help us achieve communism. And when you have the theoretical background that he's coming from, that makes a certain kind of sense. That, yes, if communism is the highest evolution of a society, well, then... Any society showing up here that's vastly further advanced than ourselves would be communist. And so, yes, he's very optimistically looking for assistance from alien communists or communist aliens, as you might wish to describe them. And Posada goes on to say that the aliens would not have any aggressive impulses because any advanced species would have long since overcome those primitive instincts and would only be coming here to observe and only coming here to help us. This might sound irrationally optimistic, but Posadas was certainly not alone in having that perception of visiting advanced aliens that have already gone through our stage of evolution and have put aggression and war and all such things behind them. It's different, but not that different from what George Adamski and a lot of the other contactees were talking about 
when they were describing the utopias that the Space Brothers came from, which, in fact, raised the attention of the U.S. government because so often what the contactees of the 50s and 60s were saying sounded quite a bit like completed communism, that they were coming from a world that had evolved into a utopia, and that utopia was not capitalist, was not religious, was not the American way. It was much more like what a successful communist system would look like. And frequently the contactees were investigated and surveilled sometimes, and sometimes questioned about whether they had communist beliefs. So here's Posadas, who really does have communist beliefs, who eats and sleeps communism. And his interpretation of what aliens would be like is not that different. That they would have, that they'd be superior to us simply because they're more advanced. And if the ultimate step in evolution is communism, well, there you go. So it's very, very interesting to me, at least, way of looking at it. And one that he was not alone in believing such things. One area where Posadas did differ from contactees and from other people who had a positive view of Space Brothers or alien visitors was that he did not believe that they would necessarily remain neutral or follow a Star Trek-like prime directive that humans have to sort things out for themselves. Quite the opposite. Posadas wanted to receive active assistance from the aliens. In his own words from the 68 essay, he says, we must appeal to the beings on other planets when they come here to intervene and collaborate with Earth's inhabitants in suppressing poverty. We must make this call to them. It is possible to make ourselves understood to them. We must not, of course, expect they will understand immediately. But we must make appeals to them if we believe that they can indeed exist. If we have any possibility of making contact with them, we must not fall into individualistic scientific curiosity out of some desire to see where they come from and visit other plants. We must unite with them. They seem more powerful than human beings, such that they will come and help us resolve Earth problems. Then we can concern ourselves with going to see what other plants are like, how life and matter are organized, and everything regarding nature. But most important is first to resolve the problems of humanity on Earth. We do not have a fantasist or idealist position with regard to flying saucers. As we accept that they exist, we want to use all means at hand, including those from outside this planet. When we seriously reach a scientific discovery, we must try to use it to the benefit of humanity. So yes, Posadas is saying we should invite the aliens, we should contact the aliens, we should get them to come here and help us reach communism on Earth. And I'll just let that speak for itself. That is what he said, and in various forms said repeatedly many times for many years. There's one other aspect of Osadis' beliefs that I have to address, and it wasn't something that he gave a lot of attention to publicly during his lifetime but it is something that has become an item of fascination in more recent years, particularly in internet memes and in things like Reddit. 
And that is J. Posadas was a believer that it was at least worth doing the research at a minimum into whether humans could communicate with dolphins. That, to me, honestly, is one of the more mainstream things he believed. There has been a significant body of work on communicating with dolphins. Uh, dolphins, by any measure, are highly intelligent creatures. And he believed that it was possible, at least at some point in the future, to telepathically or in some other way using technology to develop communication with with dolphins and, and talk with them and interact with them and that at some point in the future they might beca become part of a utopian society. And that to me doesn't sound crazy. We are aware that dolphins have more pound for pound brain capacity than brain size than human beings. We know that they display intelligence in the wild and that they have displayed intelligence in previous very legit scientific experiments in the United States. However, you know, the Posada talking dolphin thing has become a big meme and is tied in pretty much wherever he shows up in pop culture. But that wasn't a major issue on which he, you know, spoke of a great deal. But it was a thing that he did believe in. And I think it only means that he was ahead of his time um, in that particular regard. Not so much the nuclear war, but definitely the communication with dolphins. Yes. So in talking about J. Posadas and his various fascinating beliefs, I really want to give credit where credit is due. And that is several different sources that helped me put together the show and that I look forward to reading more thoroughly as soon as possible. Those sources include what looks to be an absolutely fascinating book called I Want to Believe, Posadism, UFOs, and Apocalyptic, Apocalyptic Communism by A.M. Gitlitz, G-I-T-T-L-I-T-Z, 2020 book, and an excellent interview by David Broder with A.M. Gitlitz in the April 5th, 2020 edition of the left-wing political magazine Jacobin, which I recommend whatever your politics are, it's a really interesting interview, really interesting story. Also, an article by Matt Salisbury in the August 2003 edition of the British magazine Fortean Times, which describes Posadism. Um, all very, very interesting material. Um, Posadas died in 1981. His political legacy has not been significant. Um, the general collapse of communism and his lack of a real structure that continued after his death caused him to become something of a side note in history. But that's politics. As far as UFOs, aliens, and talking with dolphins, perhaps he was just a man ahead of his time. This is The Weird Part. I'm Vincent Trewell. Thanks for listening, and good night.